with uh, Professor Pro Lena Wati, all the way from Kenya. Hello, welcome. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Professor Lena Nahone Wati from uh, Kenya. I'm a professor at the Jetta University, but more importantly, I am here as a Soroptimist, representing Soroptimist International. Uh, I'm actually the African representative at this uh, panel. And the reason why I'm here is because I value water as very important uh, from a Soroptimist point of view and from a professional point of view. Because water and sanitation is very important in the economic development, especially of developing countries. And as an optimist in Nakuru, uh, north of Nairobi, Kenya, we have participated in a number of uh, water and sanitation programs, targeting mainly women and girls. We've done that in two schools, Gomogeri Primary, which is near Jetson University, and Daruku Primary, which is near Jetson University, principally just to provide water, then to provide sanitation, that's toilets, and somewhere where they can wash their hands after they have used the toilets. So we felt, when we received this invitation, that it's very important to share with the world that water and sanitation is actually an economic driver of any economy, especially in the developing world. And what are you hoping to get out of these two days, this world water? The two days we are here yes. is actually to share what we believe in as optimists in yes. terms of water. Considering this international you know, uh, year of water, what do we hold dear to our hearts? And how can we partner with others? For example, we want to look at how can we make sure first that we have the water available, but we have clean water that's available, not just from the rivers or from the dams or from the taps. How do we make it safe at household level? That is end use safety of the water. We want to look at what else, what tools can we use to make water available which is clean, like using um, local materials or local pumps to pump water, let's say from the uh, streams, instead of people walking down there, polluting it and taking it. In fact, in some areas you find that people walk down there, take a bath and then take the water. But if we protect the source of water and have a cheap way of having to deliver this uh, water to the families, then that would be great. As of now, let me say for the last two years, we actually been uh, concentrating on uh, institutions uh, for our club, that is uh, it's not the National Nakuru Club. We are concentrating on primary schools mainly targeting schools which have a high population of uh, girls, so that we have uh, sanitation facilities separated. And we also find that even in these schools, both men and women don't have adequate sanitation facilities. So we've tried like, uh, to build some uh, toilets and even build a bathroom for girls who feel at that particular time like in their menstrual cycle, they need to take a bath. We put in uh, a few funds spared to do that kind of job. And have you heard today that because you are very into more focus on hygiene and girls' rights? Yes. Right? Yes. Um, so would your message be that uh, for after 2015, uh, a bigger focus on girls' rights and hygiene for girls in education and in schools uh, uh, would be necessary. That's, that's very necessary. And I think after 2015, if that is achieved, we will uh, be able to say we've made some step towards that direction. But when we talk of 2015, we're saying the world should also know that there are those like MDGs many countries have achieved, but we also want them to think of other countries. For example, the, the states which have been in war, post-conflict post states, have they really achieved even the basic MDGs? Have they really achieved even just access 
to water. Leave alone safe water. That's yeah. the question. Okay, I want to thank you very much. Have a good day.